Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you Eugen versus Corbo in the semi-final of the fourth Asia Pacific tournament. Today we are going to be seeing Point de Hoc and Eugen is using his 716th and Corbo is using his third Fallschirmjäger. So definitely an interesting one today. Now if we focus on this map, Point de Hoc pre presents a quite nice field of battle for the third Fallschirmjäger in a sense that a lot of these tree lines are spaced where the third Fallschirmjäger can take advantage of the 300 meter range which is absolutely perfect uh, for them to get max HE on target. So that's what we're going to have to look for on the top side. Um, however, on the other side of things, the 716th can use these to their advantage as well with the strong fire support units that they bring, especially with things like B2s and IG-18s. Now looking at the divisions, well, we know that Eugen really loves to use Panzer Shrek, so I expect to see quite a lot of them on this map. Um, there is a lot of places where you can hide them, and with their very good stealth, um, they will be hard to find on the side of Corbo. That will definitely make it difficult for him to use tanks effectively. Uh, but if maybe he uses his tanks in combination with his Volschmjägers, he might be able to sort of find and kill off those Panzer Strikes before they could become an issue. He does also have very strong uh, recon that he can use, so that's something that uh, Corbo might come out with as well on this map, just so that he doesn't get caught out by the Panzer Shreks that Eugen's been using for pretty much the entire tournament now. So let's have a look at some of the units going down. On the side of Corbo, it's actually quite interesting. He's got a uh, Fallschirmjäger for the top side. He's got a Fallschirmjäger a little bit further down with an L6. He's got another Fallschirmjäger with L6. And then on the bottom side, it's currently two Fallschirmjägers. So these L6s are quite interesting, actually. There's a lot of things that can counter them. So once again, Panzer Shreks, um, Pack 37s, if they get close enough, can probably quite convincingly penetrate an L6 and get the kill. Uh, B2s, of course, um, which I very much enjoy using with the 716th, um, can, can counter these L6s quite nicely. Um, generally, they, they shrug off the auto cannon fire. So... That's something that uh, is going to be interesting to watch, how Corbo is thinking of using these L6s. Uh, he could get caught out, and if he does, and the L6s go down and leave the Volschmig is unsupported, that's when Eugen can come in with like the artillery and just completely nullify the strengths of the Volschmig infantry. Because if you pin down an infantry unit and you surrender it, then... Yeah, you just take away its entire effectiveness without having to fight it. And that is the beauty of the morale system in Steel Division. Now on the top side here, uh, we can see that the recon has been deployed. There's also the Panzer Shrek. We've got Command Infantry and an AT gun. That's going to probably be a Pack 37. But yeah, one Panzer Shrek already. Let's look a little bit further down. Oh, another Panzer Shrek, yeah. I, th I thought Eugen would use a lot of them, and he's definitely showing it here. Another Pack 37. He's brought in an IG-18 as well, with some Ostroop in there, with some Recon and Command. For the main road, it's going to be another Panzer Shrek with the Ostroopen, two units of Ostroopen, three units of Ostroopen, and the Command. And on the bottom side, it's currently just a, a Recon Squad and a Panzer Shrek. Now you might want to have a Ostrupen on the main road down here, otherwise when those unload, um, the front line won't be affected, and therefore Corbo might find himself a salient early on. But we'll have to wait and see how it turns out. Let me just uh, speed up the deployment. It's been a relatively lengthy one, but uh, with the amount of things that the 716th can deploy, it doesn't surprise me, especially on this map, that uh, Eugen will want to make sure he's sort of deployed correctly. So you can see that a relatively large concentration heading to the centre road, just above the centre road and on the very top side, which is normal, uh, follows the roads 
um, to each destination and generally provides the points of contention. The same will be on the other side as um, Corbo takes his infantry down each road to bump into uh, Eugene. Of course, the start on the side of Corbo is significantly lighter because his infantry costs so much more. So, Volsumigas, I think, are 45 points apiece, and on the side of Eugene, he can buy two Ostrupen for that price. Well, what I am surprised to see out of Eugene is no artillery early on, as it definitely is something that can give you an advantage against these Volsham Jaegers. But as I mentioned, with no Ostrupen on the bottom side currently deployed, it does mean that there is going to be a salient forming here, and these Volsham Jaegers are getting real close to this Panzerschreck. Let's see if this Panzerschreck can, can get a kill before those unload. That would be really, really nice actually here for Eugene. Um, it's going to have to wait until they come over the top of the hill here, and they unloaded just in time. Oh, Corbo there. That is ruthless. Going to be pinning down those speeds through very quickly. Going to be able to kill off the Panzerschreck at close range. And that just completely removes Eugen's threat on this bottom side. Wow. Perfect unload timing there from this Volsheimjäger. Now in the mid, we can see the engagement between the L6 and the Volsheimjäger here. Speed through, but found themselves in a very awkward position. Um, they don't want to be killed off because Eugen doesn't want to lose his um, recon at this moment. IG-18 can be used to take on these Volsheimjägers but won't want to be in the face of the L6. I like the placement of the Pac-37 though and if this IG-18 remains in a decent spot as well the L6 is going to be forced in front of that Pac-37 if it wants to find a kill. Volsheimjägers on the bottom side did um, surrender the speed through as they were not um, forced to fall back and now we see some Ostrupen coming in to try and cover that but it's going to be very awkward fighting Ostrupen against Volsheimjägers in this sort of engagement range, uh, especially with no support. So we can now see a B2 on the way, and that's what I like to see, B2 on the top side as well. Eugen is really want to start, going to want to start getting aggressive here, using the Ostrupen to sort of screen the B2 as it advances. It's a very easy way to, to start taking care of these Volsheimjägers. So here we can see the Ostrup and they're going to open up onto those Volsheimjägers. The Panzerschreck here has actually been left in the open rather than in the tree line. So it actually got mowed down by the MG34s uh, of the Volsheimjäger. And that is a big loss for Eugen in the center because it removes one more threat from this L6 that would otherwise have a very good chance of killing the L6. So, so far, 53% territory lead for Corbo. He's made some really good engagements, and that, like again, just unloading that Volsheimjäger in time on that bottom side was really, really nice. He did it to attack the speed troop as well, not even to um, avoid the Panzerstrack squad. So, a little bit of luck involved, I guess, because if the Panzerstrack had fired first, then the Volsheimjägers probably would have found themselves pinned and uh, therefore ran down by the Panzerstrack squad. Um, Kubel is actually helping out here pin down some Ostrup and since they are disheartened they do get pinned down very quickly by the MG42 on that car. Uh, the V2 as you can see pins down the Volsheimjäger very very quickly and will be forcing those back. These Volsheimjäger have managed to push up quite a ways and honestly if they kill off this IJ-18 I reckon this singular Volsheimjäger unit should be able to kill all of these other forces. However, saying that, with them taking one IG-18 shot, that is going to leave them in a bad position in terms of morale. HS-129 is floating about with an ME-109 G6R6. That HS-129 is going to be looking for the shots onto the B2. Eugene's going to want to bring in some form of anti-air to stop these from being effective. Does he have line of sight onto the B2? The best thing that Eugene can do right now is just hide with his tanks. So, Corbo cannot see them yet. He can see this B2 on the bottom side. Is he going to target that? Yeah, I think he is. He's going for it. Turns on the main gun. Oh, wow. Nice hit there from Corbo. One shot kill. That is, well, two shot kill, I guess. But that is savage. 
IJ18 is going to try and cover these Ostroop and as they advance into the face of these Falsham Jaeger. The Falsham Jaeger were on return fire. Corbo turned them on at the perfect time there and just instantly surrendered the Ostroop. And now the ME109 G6R6 is going to be strafing the IG18. You can even see the HS129 coming in for strafing runs as well. And that is an extremely interesting use of this HS129. But I think what Corbo is doing is waiting for the B2 to show itself on the top side. But with the B2 gone down here, you can see the L6 really wants to get involved. Fast moving down here can rip to shreds all of these units without any AP support on the side of Eugen. So this is going to leave him in a very odd position. B2 has come out of hiding, now going to be engaging the Falsham Jaegers at range. Um, IG-18 has arrived to help out as well. Eugen still could make quite a lot of ground on this top side actually, as it is not being reinforced currently by Corbo. And even if he brings in more infantry like he is doing so, um, those are still going to fall in the face of this B2 as long as that is not killed by the HS-129. What we're really looking forward or looking for in the mid as well is this pack 37 to find the L6 kill and then Eugene can start to think about cleaning up the Falsham Jaegers but this Panzerhabitzer Lorraine is going to be very important in getting that done he needs to have a unit that can pin down the Falsham Jaegers and remove their effectiveness because you can see here these Falsham Jaegers can rip to shreds units from range when ideally you want to have them already pinned down so IG-18 there going to be engaging the Kubel MG it's going to auto fall back in the face of that. Uh, you can see these Falsham Jaegers under a lot of fire. The Ostrupen engaging those Falsham Jaegers. But the Falsham Jaegers in heavy cover. It's going to be relatively hard to pin down due to their veterancy. But they have been. Ostrupen will only have to be a little bit closer to make them surrender. Pack 37 though did find itself pinned down by the L6. And without that AT support this L6 could run over all of this infantry now. So... Eugen has to be very, very careful how he goes about this. Once again, without the AP support on this bottom side in the form of either an AT gun or a B2, this L6 is going to be able to do a lot of work down here accompanied by his Falsham Jaegers. On the top side, however, B2 has made short work of now two Falsham Jaegers. The third one is now under attack. Pack 41 Gerlich has a lot of work to do there. So Eugen's making a little bit of ground here, but uh, again, with this Pack 37 being pinned down and now completely unvetted due to not being too far away from the Grenfjörder, this L6 is just running rampant over Eugen's infantry. Uh, so there's so much damage. Same deal on the bottom side. L6 is still alive. Just going to continue to rampage through infantry with the assistance of the Falschmjägers. Now a nice kill there from the Panzerschreck onto an unloaded infantry. That's not going to stop Corbo bringing in another L6. He's seeing now that his strategy is working and more L6s would only make things worse for Eugen. So that's exactly what he's bringing. Falsham Jaegers deal with another unit in the center there by making those surrender. HS129 is on the way on the top side and if this finds the kill onto the B2 or even the Lorraine for that matter, then Eugen could be in a lot of trouble. Internal Fragment is going to get killed as well fantastic micro there from Corbo so what if you guys didn't already realize I think I talked about it before but Corbo he turns off the 37 mil gun on the HS129 and only lets it fire when it gets in within a certain range where it's way more accurate and it is um, also having much higher AP so it's more lethal and it's more accurate at close range and that's why he then allows it to fire. The HS129 is, is initially more accurate and is more likely to get the kill. So the infantry in the center has just been completely overrun now. The Ostrup are gone. With the B2 dying on the bottom side, the Falsham Jaegers are just going to completely overrun the Ostrupen. L6s are now arriving on the top side and with the B2 gone down there... I mean, again, same thing's going to happen. L6s can just clean this up. Yes, the Pack 41 Gerlich might go down to the Ostrupen, but it's not going to be enough as Eugen surrenders after 10 minutes and one second. Couldn't see himself coming back from that, and honestly, neither could I really. 
um, with Corbo continuing the air dominance, the HS129s would have become extremely oppressive for the B2s for the rest of the game. And the AA out of the 716th is lackluster to begin with, so he wouldn't have been left with much options and with himself being outmatched in infantry, there's nothing really happening there. Maybe a second Panzerhabitzer might have made things a little easier. But I think the main issue really comes from not investing in a or artillery at the start to overwhelm Falschmiegers quicker, forcing those L6s to then make mistakes and getting themselves killed by the AT guns or the B2s. Um, so that's what I would have liked to have seen, but it didn't really work out in this case for Eugen. His kill is very, very low if we go to the kill death. 725 kills to 150 losses for Corbo and vice versa for Eugen. In terms of kills, he had the Panzer B2 took out one Forschmig, IG-18 took out another. Panzer Trek killed the one before it unloaded. And that's pretty much it. And then the Forschmig is going absolutely ham. Killing Panzer Trek, Speed Troop, Ostrupen. This one killing Grenfieller, Panzer Trek. HS129 popped both of the B2s. L6 just running over a lot of infantry as well in the mid. And uh, yeah, Corbo's use of all of his units was on point, honestly. I was a bit worried about the L6s due to Eugen's love of his Panzer Treks at the moment with the 716th. But in this case, the Panzer Treks couldn't find the targets and the Falschmiegers just picked them off. And uh, yeah, that left Eugen in a very sticky situation after, again, his AT guns and the B2s died as well. And that's pretty much all she wrote. So that's where I'm going to leave it. And another relatively short game in the tournament. Going to be pushing Eugene down to the lower bracket final. Corbo moving on to the final itself. I have to see if Eugene can defeat Herr Robert in the lower bracket final to bring himself back up to the final to maybe find revenge onto Corbo. Going to be hard work, especially with the 716th versus the first Panserna once again but in the meantime hopefully you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one goodbye